Yo, what's going on guys? It is your boy Kimbo here and it's time for an epic Bakugan Geogon Rising uh, episode review. So, yeah, I figure I'll stick with the episode reviews because, you know, I do the reactions and such with uh, the Beyblade Burst anime, of course. So, I'll just, I guess, keep a review style for these because, yeah, being able to go back in all the details and really get my thoughts together with them without thinking about stuff on the spot. But, yeah, man. So, without further ado, Geogon Rising episodes number 10 and 11 so yeah this season it's been known that it's going to be a shorter season and such i think it's what uh 50 11 minute episodes or something like that it's definitely like a smaller uh number so it's not like 100 episodes or anything so it's going to be a smaller season at least anime wise but still a lot going on with the season and definitely love the build that they're doing uh with it so uh episode number 10. If you haven't seen before this, give you five seconds to go back and watch or such so you're not spoiled. But, yeah, so we are at the location of the Supreme Bakugan Council. Um, all the events going on to where Drago is now a member of the council. And so, uh, the awesome brows and everyone are basically on the outside just talking about it a little bit. And then, um... They still haven't fully figured out the decision for it because now they've decided that Drago is a member of the council, but they still have to uh, resume the actual uh, vote. This vote being for whether to separate Earth and Destroya or not to, you know. And the council obviously decides this. So uh, before even getting into that, <laughs> Lightning has to go to the bathroom and then he goes to the bathroom, literally, he finds a a post and is like running around it and then goes to the bathroom because lightning is a dog you know and then there's a bakugan that's like hey who dares defile my weapon and it's actually an arless a golden bakugan it's an arless apollyon it's been master how are you gonna keep putting apollyon in the show and then not make an actual just apollyon figure because for sure like Yes, we got Cloud Door, Polyon, but heck, you can still make a, a Polyon, Artulian, Tico, Leonidas, Gilator. Uh, yeah, the Oratoa. Like, the list goes on. There's a lot of figures that you can make, and definitely hope that some do come because how they started off with making, uh, you know, this, the additional Cindy's Ultras. Uh, this shows they can go and make molds for older Bakugan, even ones that we haven't seen before, and include it as well. But anyways, getting off the subject, just just seeing an Arliss Apollyon, because it looks so cool and I want a figure of it, dang it. But anyways, uh, Arliss Apollyon uh, then starts attacking Lightning and Farascal, because he's upset about the weapon and such. But then meanwhile, while this is going on on the outside, uh, they all go back inside and they continue the vote. So they decide to uh, vote on it, and it's two to two. So to separate Earth and Vestroya, both uh, Vilic and Gorin vote for it. But against it, Pyravian and Drago vote against it. So it's two versus two. So they have to go to these special rules. And basically, Drago suggests a battle. Actually, Dan suggests a battle. But then he looks up the rules. Vilic looks up the rules, and it's actually for a battle to take place. So... Um, the way that they set it up is each of them gets to add in a rule to the battle. So, uh, yeah, uh, Goreen made the rule that it should be in all the different worlds or like for all the different factions. I think all the different, I think it's all different areas of Astroya. So I think Astroya is actually still split up kind of into areas like how the old Astroya was for like the first era. They're paying homage to that. And it kind of seems that way, the way they explain this. But, um, yeah, so a battle going on in all the different worlds with, um, different Bakugan, you know, um, which I thought that was really, really cool that they're paying homage like that. Uh, that was Goreen's rule. And then, um, Pyravian put out a rule that it's a three on three Bakugan battle. That's what it should be. And then, uh, through advice from the awesome brawlers, uh, Drago decided that the humans can fight alongside the Bakugan, you know. And then Vilik was the last one to make his rule. But before that happens, Lightning <laughs> and Farascal and also this Arlis of Polyon all come in. 
and like Apollyon still attacking them, and then challenged uh, Lightning to a duel. Obviously a battle, so it's Apollyon versus Farasco. Big time battles going on and such between them. And honestly, this Apollyon's really, really strong. 700 Bs. Um, and Farasco's in trouble. But then Lightning finds a special core. So it's a Geo core. So Lightning getting his Geo gun with this. The big build up for this. Lightning get, getting his Geo gun. Meanwhile, I'm just like, they're really letting this all pan out. These are sacred lands and such. It's a sacred area. And then Lightning <laughs> and Apollyon are just fighting. And then Lightning still goes to the bathroom. He's like, I, I gotta go. Like, I'm, I'm doing it. <laughs> Lightning was a savage in this episode, man. But uh fast forward a little bit lightning getting his geogon which it is mantrapod so mantrapod does belong to lightning darkest mantrapod mantrapod takes out apollyon and villick finally sees um a battle with the geogon and was like interesting and villick finally makes his rule and that's that geogon can be used with the battle at first like dan was kind of like like irritated about it i don't know uh, maybe of just like animation render or such, because why would you be upset? I mean, the fact they can use their geo gun makes it where they can have more power and such. But the big question is just like, how how is this battle gonna go? It's gonna be three versus three. So the question is, uh, definitely the awesome brawlers. You know, it's gonna be Drago. Like on Drago and Pyravian side, it's gonna be the awesome brawlers. But on Villic and Goreen, who are they gonna have fight for them? You know, that's the big question. Are they going to resort to, like, kind of evil characters just because, like, their mentality and such is not so much about, like, Bakugan and humans living together, like, trying to separate them and such. And just having, like, an old school kind of mentality. Kind of like how Gorillion had, you know, just to care about the Bakugan. Villic having that now. And Gorin still being on the fence with it even after all this time. He's like, not all of you are bad, but we should separate the planets, you know kind of like that so just like kind of a little war on ideals so that's the first uh part of the episode the second part of the episode the awesome brawlers are all training for this event and um you know they all launch out their bakugan and such and in the middle of it uh two parents actually show up and say are you the awesome brawlers and uh explain that they're the parents of the rowdy reds so the rowdy reds were the parents were trying to get them to move they didn't want to move so they ran away from home basically that being the setup but then you know it's kind of like the the younger kid i don't want to live here anymore so i'm just gonna go off by myself and having to figure out how to like life and such and how to survive in general you know just leaving and they went with the approach of trying to be bakugan hunters um just so they can make their way by. And so they joined up with Strata. And so Strata's like, you can take their Bakugan, can't you? And they're like, no, we can't do it because they know it's wrong. And he's like, well, I'll show you how to do it. And he starts going and taking all their Bakugan. So, uh, yeah. And then everybody was at, like, the park. And they were looking around for their Bakugan. A few kids were. And they got really upset. I think that's when the Awesome Brawler showed up. And, like, what's wrong? My Bakugan are missing. And then seeing, like, footprints and such. They managed to track down who did it, and uh, they find the Rowdy Reds. Well, they find Strata, and they find the Rowdy Reds with Strata. And they say, do you really want to go down this route? Like, you know, partnering with him, you know he's bad news. And they just didn't want to move, you know? That's the main thing behind it is, like, we're not going home to our parents. We don't want to move. We like it here in Los Balmos. So they have, like, good motives because they want to really stay and such because, obviously, they got a bond with everybody here with all the battles and such. We've seen the Rowdy Reds since literally the first season, which I still love that they're including all these characters this far, and it's the third season, you know? Yeah, so we're getting new people with the cast, but they're still bringing in older characters, and that's one thing I really, really enjoy about this anime, hands down. Um, yeah, this reboot, like, for the show, definitely enjoy that. Like, developing the plot with all these seasons, but still having characters that we've seen in the first season still returning even with this third season, which that's really, really cool. But, yeah, anyways, uh, leads to a battle, um, and then, uh, what was it? It was a G, I believe, yeah, G and Shun, so... Uh, then you have Pinsitar and Sharktar 
both getting ruled out, and then uh, the Rowdy Reds ruling out all the Scorporoses, and then they're obviously getting the advantage on Shark Tar because Pinsitar is sitting there lounging around because Pinsitar is a complete free spirit, just like, mm, no, I don't feel like it. I don't want to do that right now. You know, just laid back and chilling and not caring, just enjoying life pretty much. Um, but then in the middle of the of the battle, like, you know, because well, Scorporoses are scorpions. Um, Strata says, yes, get them, scorpions. And then Pinsitar just hears scorpion and immediately gets triggered. Like, did you just call me a scorpion? No, I wasn't talking to you. Strata's like, I wasn't talking to you. And then sure enough, Pinsitar just goes wild. And in the middle of it, there's a big burst of energy. And then we get a Geocore that shows up in front of a Jeep. So, Ajit getting his own Geogon. There are Arlis Geogon, and he does have Titan King. I think my alarm went off. That notification went off, whatever. But yeah, Titan King showing up, dude. So, yeah, and that is the name that they kept for it was uh, Titan King. Thought they might have switched it, but no, nah, they kept uh, Titan King. And I think thus far, it is the strongest, not only the strongest Bakugan, like power wise, but like the strongest Geogon. Because it has 800. You know, it's got 800 uh, bees with it. So it's very, very powerful. Uh, yeah, it's a given. Just, you know, that Arliss power added with it. So, yeah, and Arliss still being at this crazy, crazy level uh, power wise and such. Which is why I really want to see some more cards in real life, especially like Arliss supporting cards. Because. Yeah, Arliss is really awesome, and that's the main thing for Arliss is keeping the balance, so naturally with the game, you know, the actual TCG game, it's it's balanced, you know, all the cards for Arliss are really, really balanced out, so yeah, I definitely want to see some more Arliss cards, man, no doubt, but anyways, Titan King just completely whoops, and that's the end of it, uh, the Rowdy Reds feel bad, and then they give back uh, the Bakugan that they took, and then their parents show up, they turn around, and they get really upset, and they run to them and start crying. They're like, we won't run away again, we're sorry. But then the parents being understanding, too, like, we understand, you have these bonds and such with everybody here, so we decided we're going to stay here, we're not going to move. And then they got really, really happy, and then it's all resolved and all good and such. So, yeah, definitely enjoy how they're putting in, like, some people might see them as, like, side episodes or filler episodes, but not so much because they still have those really, really fun, heartwarming moments with it, and also just seeing characters that we've seen since season one still returning, you know, because if that didn't happen, you know, people would say how things went with the, uh, with the first era, where they just continued to bring in new cast and all their cast was just gone, you know. Basically, after every season, like, you know, it was, like, a little bit of remnants of the cast, but not much. You know, a lot of new characters. But they're still having so many people that we've seen since season one still getting tied in with it. And that's one thing I really enjoy. Like, having them return and such, their Bakugan still putting up pretty decent fights. Them being a part of, like, the story and the dialogue and such with it. Uh, I definitely do enjoy that with this reboot. So, yeah, and seeing the Rowdy Reds with this one, that was really, really nice. So... Uh, yeah, man. So that is episode number 10. Overall, definitely uh, dug it for sure. Going from like the serious kind of tone, you know, and the big time ominous buildup with this three on three battle for the fate of like destroy and earth, you know, into uh, this nice little relaxing uh, episode with the Rowdy Reds and such, you know, and just developing some story with them. So, yeah, definitely dug it big time. So now getting into episode 11. Now, this was a really, really fun episode uh, for sure. Like both parts of it. So the first part starting off with uh, the awesome Brawlers just sitting and watching TV. And they see this advertisement for like this Bakugan, uh, like this Bakugan spectacle event. You know, Bakugan spectacular um, to where they show off like the funniest, the strongest, the fastest, you know. Uh, Bakugan, and then they have trophies in each category. So, yeah, and also the cool thing about this was in the actual uh, commercial for it, there was a Cubbo with a party hat. So, you know, there's been rumors and such going around of cosplay Cubbo going to be a thing, and they showed it off in this episode. 
you know, literally just the Cubo being the big time announcer for the commercial. But that still shows like it's basically confirmed they're going to be coming. And hands down, I want to get all the Cubos for sure. Like all the cosplay Cubos that they make, definitely going to collect them. Because you can also battle with them. And Cubo just being Cubo, you know, who knows what they're going to do. And plus having them with these cosplays, it means there's going to be a different Cubo in each faction. Hopefully that means they make them stronger than the actual Cubos because Cubo in general isn't like the best Bakugan. Well, Aqua's Cubo being the most notorious one because it's really strong and it's, it's good. He's got a good Evo, so hopefully these cosplay Cubos are pretty strong and they will diversify the game for sure. And I know they're kind of meant to maybe be collectibles, but they apparently have cards with them and such and can be used. And if so, you know I'd make a cosplay Cubo deck. Hands down, dude. Uh, pay homage to Lord Cubo. Yeah, for sure. It's my dude. But anyways, getting back into it, they see this commercial and they all decide, like, do you want to actually join in this? Um, and then Farascal saw the trophy and was like, yeah, like that. Now that's a prize right there. And Farascal was in and then Pinsatar was like, no, nah, I'm not into it too much. And then, uh, G said he'd get him some snacks or something. And then he's like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'll join. <laughs> and they all decide to join in. So they have like a strongest competition. Um, Pinsatar is in that one, but then like cut the string because of his claws and such, and then flies backwards. So... Yeah, they didn't actually win that one. Um, uh, for Rascal was running on the treadmill to be like the fastest and was in the lead. And then uh, Lightning knocked into like a Cubo figure. And then the Cubo, yeah, knocked into a Cubo. And then the Cubo let balloons go. One of the balloons got in for Rascal's nose. And then for Rascal fell off the treadmill. And, uh, you know, <laughs> they were just embarrassed about that. Lightning is like, oh, because... Obviously, him running into the Cubo and such caused that to happen. But then, Dan trying to enter Drago into the funniest, but he forgot they didn't enter him, so he couldn't enter in that. And he was like, oh, man, because he forgot to register for it. And the last one was actually uh, the coolest Bakugan, and Leah entered for that one. And uh, so, from what I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were talking uh, they, they were all talking, and then one of the kids who won the competition, I think it was, um, the fastest, uh, he was crying with the trophy next to him, and they're like, why are you crying? He says, because, um, the guy that's behind this, he took my Bakugan, he said in order to get the trophy, he would take the Bakugan, and then Leah thought of the strategy, like, all I have to do is win this competition, because if I do, then I'll meet whoever this person is, and I'll figure it out. So then we had the actual competition. Leah goes out, literally nines and tens across the board for Leah and Fennica. And then Duran shows up after, but then gets ones right across the board. Uh, and he was like, this is rigged. I'm a child star, <laughs> you know, because he had his, uh, uh, his, uh, Nobilius. Yeah, his Pyrus Nobilius. But, uh, yeah, man, then Leah winning it. Uh, they take her behind the scenes and such, and then uh, she meets whoever it is that gives her a trophy. And sure enough, it's Everett. And as soon as she figures out it's Everett, she actually has like a video playing. She's, she was smart about this. She had a video playing, and Everett's sitting there all confident and such, and saying, well, the rules technically say in the paperwork, um, we can take the strongest Bakugan and then have them... For showcases and such and then doing these showcases we'll get all kinds of views just getting crazy grief for views and such it's like uh but yeah the price for fame or something but anyways man leah being like no i'm not gonna allow you to do this and then sure enough a battle ensues so it's uh benica versus uh duran so uh everett actually gets duran to battle with his Nobilius, and then also seeing Pyrus Nobilius. The funny thing is, it used Air Zero. Uh, yeah, it used Air Zero, which, you know, Air Zero being a really, really strong card, and then it's got Nobilius' artwork on there, so that explains that. So, yeah, and it's ironic, because it has Air Zero, but Duran's Nobilius, it's decent, but it's not, like, a crazy powerful Bakugan or anything. You know, it's got some big-time power, though. But, in the middle of the battle, um, Leah's you know, well, you know, Fennec is low on power, and then Leah has 
a Geo Core show up by her. So Lee is getting her Geo Gun as well. So they're definitely doing the build up with everybody getting their Geo Gun at this point. I think um, Leo was the only one that didn't have one, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, Dan has Arcleon. Winton has Talon. Lightning with Montrepod. Ajit with Titan King. Now Leah with uh, Arachnia. So everybody but Shun. Has Shun gotten one yet? I can't remember off the top of my head, honestly. I don't think so. But anyways, um, yeah, so Arachnia shows up originally. I thought Leah was going to be kind of terrified of Arachnia. Nah, I just want to do it casually. Like, I need your help. Please defeat them. And then sure enough, uh, takes out Nobilius. And then... Uh, Everett's like, oh man, all the views are through the roof because there's a Geogun that showed up. Everybody's watching this. You know, even going down in defeat. And then Leah's like, oh really? Plays the entire video of what Everett said. And then everybody's looking like, that's him. He's the one that took my Bakugan. Kid from earlier. And then they all just look at him like, oh yeah, really? Then he's like, hope to see you at the next event, and then tosses back his Bakugan and runs off, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, classic Everett, just being Everett. But, yeah, Balea getting Arachnia, man, so, so awesome to see it. Uh, but, yeah, definitely just the build up with all the awesome brawlers getting their Geo gone. And then once we get through this part, then we'll get the three-on-three -three battle with the Geo gone and such. And I'm really curious about how the build up's going to be for it, but... Anyways, getting into the second part of this episode, we have uh, the Baku Rockers showing up um, and basically just saying there's going to be this big time rock event and Dan Kuzo, you better show up. You're the guest of honor and there's going to be a battle between me and you. And then at the actual event, a lot of people actually showed up to it big time. And the awesome ballers were wondering, like, why are so many people showing up to the Rockers event? Well, the reason being is because Crystal Blue is there. So it's called Crystal Blue, the songstress. But um, yeah, she shows up and they start doing a little musical number. And, you know, Crystal Blue is famous for singing. So uh, yeah, she starts singing and everybody just gets in, encapsulated in it, you know, just vibing and swaying along and such. But then it shows that like, She's kind of putting them under hypnosis because she has like this big time power with her. Putting them under hypnosis and Winton kind of figures it out, but he's figuring it out as he's getting trapped in it as well. You know, and uh, the only ones who weren't affected by it were the Bakugan and also Lightning. Like they're all sitting there like, hey, what the heck's wrong with everybody? <laughs> you know, and then so they go up and Lightning like yells in Dan's ear and it wakes up Dan and then they look over and realize, and uh, they're like, oh, so you awoke. Okay. And then obviously a battle ensues. So then we got like the the rocker, Crack Helios, and then also Crystal Blue throwing out her Bakugan as well. And then everybody's uh, rooting for Crystal Blue, you know, because they're still under her hypnosis. And then... Lightning runs up to the mic and literally just starts barking in it really loud. And then everybody just snaps back to normal. It was kind of funny seeing that. Um, but yeah. And then, you know, the battle kind of resolves at that point. Well, Strata, meanwhile, while they're all hypnotized, Strata's out getting all of their Bakugan. And, uh, you know, obviously trying to steal them. But then they all come to and they see Strata. And then you just see a bunch of kids and then this little girl, like, jumping and running. They're just beating down Strata. He just got mugged by a bunch of kids. And it was hilarious. Um, but, yeah, then after that, uh, Crystal Blue retreats, you know, because she gets a call from Gregorius Reed basically saying, like, things didn't work here. You know, they the main thing they're going after is all their Bakugan and such, you know. And then Gregorius Reed was like, our job here is done. And then she retreats, Strata retreats, and they're gone and such. And yeah, you know, everybody get their Bakugan back. But yeah, man, overall, the vibes of both these episodes, you know, really, really fun and laid back. And then the whole, uh, you know, 
the whole vibe of everybody like snapping everybody out of their senses and such still being like a kind of laid back fun event but then snapping them out of their senses and then also all the vibes of the try well not the triathlon the spectacular like you know basically being like a talent contest and such adding that aspect with it as well and then figure out what was going on behind that so yeah two really fun casual events but then they're just being some evil motives behind the events and figuring out what you know what actually was going on so yeah overall really really fun episode episode 11 was for sure and now uh getting back into the big time story probably with the episodes going forward so yeah i'm big time hype uh i love that they're putting in people might see them as like being like kind of like side episodes or such but it's still including a lot of these characters with it and them being a part of the story and such and that's one thing i really enjoy about it because you know seeing these characters still come back even after being in season one or season two you know not scrapping them and having them still be a part of it and a part of the events in los Lomos, like that's really really awesome i definitely dig that for sure just how they're intertwining like new characters developing the story but also having some older characters return and even uh have some story develop with them as well with this season definitely enjoy that for sure so yeah dude i'm looking forward to the next episodes that are going to be coming and definitely like the next releases and such that they have planned for the next waves like going into uh you know obviously being in the spring now but going into the summer so yeah man it's going to be really really epic but yeah that's going to do it for this episode reaction or episode review i guess i should say um, and also one big time thing, they put an Easter egg in this. I almost forgot about this. Cannot forget about this. They put a big time Easter egg in because now they're using the gauntlet system for battles like the gauntlet system. And they literally say gate card set, you know, so paying homage to the first era with that. After they launched it, this was before uh, the whole event with the Rowdy Reds and like their parents showing up um, during this battle, literally as they threw it. Winton says, just like old times. Yo, they had Devin do an actual big time Easter egg in there, but it's also a double entendre because, like, just like old times, like how they used to do all their battles and such when they first made the arena, that being one. But the second, obviously, being like just like old times, gate card set, you see this giant area go up. Yeah, I'm just in the first era. So sick that they did that. Just the little Easter eggs they even put in. So, so awesome, man. But anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this episode review. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to slice that like button down below. Let me know how I did. If you're new to my channel, definitely be sure to subscribe for some epic, epic content because I upload daily. And if you haven't already, be sure to ring that bell by my channel name to be notified whenever I upload a video. So yeah, guys, till next time, it is your boy Kimbo signing off. See you guys later. Thanks so much for watching. Until then, stay awesome and Bakugan, bro. I'm about to here.